In today's video, I want to take a look at a data type that is used all around the standard library and you should probably know about it and you should use it whenever it's needed. That type is called size t. But first, let's get to a simple example. So let's say we have a string. Let's say we have a char str equals here is an example. And what I want to do is iterate over it, right? For whatever reason, I just want to iterate over it. So how do you do that? We're using a for loop, right? You go for and go int i equals zero, i less than, well, to get the size of a string, you do str len of uh, str and then i plus plus. And then you do whatever you want in here. It doesn't matter. Uh, I have included a string.h here, so you can actually use str len. But the, the interesting thing is that str len doesn't actually return an integer. What it does is if you take a look at the signature of it, it actually returns a size t. Size t, so we are actually comparing a, an integer with a size t, and this is kind of dangerous. This is dangerous because uh, see what it automatically does. It doesn't actually throw an error, as you probably have noticed. This code runs, uh, compiles and runs fine. It's no issue with that, as you can see here. Um, but what it does is it converts uh, the data type from one to another. In this case, our i here is actually converted from an integer to a size t type. Okay, so we should actually be using size t instead of an int. This is what I'm saying. Whenever we're working with uh, string functions, it is actually recommended to use these types. So here I should change this to a size underscore t. And well, the code is going to compile again, it's going to work properly. It's just that now no conversions are actually needed because i is of type size t and strlen also returns size t. Other examples of where size t is actually used is whenever you use size of. So if you have, for example, let's say you want to define an int array. So you can say here array equals, and you want to actually allocate it dynamically. If you do malloc of size of int times, uh, let's say 16, this guy is actually returning a size t type. So if you ever wanted to actually pass this whole result, to a uh, function that uh, allocates the memory for you or something like that, you should have, you should actually use an uh, um, size t type, right? Not just one, not just a simple 32-bit integral. Why am I saying that? Because the size t type, if we actually go to the definition of it, you will see that at least in this uh, compiler, it's actually an unsigned 64-bit integer. So it's basically an unsigned long, long integer, right? And similarly for most other compilers, like in GCC and uh, I think the, the DevC++ compiler also does the same thing. It's only gonna actually use an unsigned int if it, it's not on a 64-bit system or something like that. So this is something to keep in mind. And if you really want to actually print this i, that's of type size t on uh, to the console with printf, you should actually uh, remember that printf does have a specifier for printing out uh, size t types. And that is just printf and percent, I think it is zd, so percent zd. And then backslash n, and if I print out i here, it should actually work properly, as you can see here. So it went from 0 to 17. And uh, I, for some reason, ZD actually does uh, print out an unsigned integer, but if you remember, D is usually an uh, assigned integer. So what I do is instead I use ZU, which is really the same thing for printf. It's just that uh, it's easier to recognize that, oh, okay, so this is a uh, size, a size T type, and it's an unsigned uh, type. You should also keep in mind that this for loop could actually go forever if this guy is uh, the maximum number that a size t can store, which is something huge. But if for some reason you actually have the maximum number you can store in a long, long in here, then this guy will just keep on going forever because at one point it's just gonna say, it's, gonna, it's just gonna be like the maximum number and it's gonna add one, it's gonna loop back to zero instead of going negative and just kind of breaking out or something similar. 
So something to keep in mind here as well as if you actually go into the negatives, you cannot do that with this. So this is only if you iterate a string. And of course, if it's a string, it's i solves as an index in an uh, array of characters or a string and that's, uh, that's fine. And that's it really. I just wanted for you to know what SAST is. If you've ever encountered it and you didn't know what's up with it or if this is the first time you've encountered it, this is how you use it. You just, uh, whenever you see a, a string function that actually returns a size t, you should actually use a size t whenever storing that data, just because it might overflow. And if that value, if that uh, size t value, that is 64 bit doesn't fit inside our small 32 bit integer, then uh, really weird things can happen right with your program and you wouldn't know what's up just because just because c is automatically converting that variable to an integer that that uh, long long to an integer all right thanks so much for watching and i hope to see you next time take care